So let's get a little more into primary research. Um, contacting research subjects. Um, mail questionnaires, you can do telephone interviewing, very common. Walking out in the middle of FIT and asking people if they'll spend five minutes answering questions or going to a mall. Another typical way of doing surveys. Survey Monkey is another one. Uh, I just want to go back here and talk about this for a minute because this came up in another class. I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, remember that our goal is to be as scientific as possible particularly when we do these primary research quantitative surveys. And there's some problems that arise from different interview methodologies. I want you to think about this. And uh, the most recent example I can give is this midterm election that we're just going through now. It isn't quite finalized yet. The votes haven't all been counted. But you are perhaps aware that the results of the election have surprised just about just about everybody out there, including most of the political pundits that you see on the cable shows, et cetera. Why? Because the surveys, the polls, P-O-L-L, -L, polls, and by the way, it's legal to do robo-dialing to do political polling. <laughs> You may remember that. I think I mentioned it in the telemarketing lecture. The polls indicated that there would be a red wave, meaning that Republicans had a lot going for them. The, the, the people interviewed were want, tending to lean to vote more Republican than Democratic. And this was just shown again and again and again in the polls for weeks coming up to the actual election date, which was this past Tuesday. But there wasn't a red wave. In fact, um, whereas the opposing party to the president normally does very well in these midterm elections, um, just because people are pissed off with the president and blame everything wrong on whoever he or she is, didn't happen this time. Democrats did very well. In fact, it looks like Democrats are going to keep control of the Senate, Senate, albeit by a narrow margin. And the House, the Congress, is still not decided. But either way, it's going to be very close. So what happened with the surveys? Why were the surveys not accurate? I want you to think about that for a minute. By the way, surveys are done on the phone mostly. Okay. Why would the surveys not be accurate? All right, well, two things come to mind for me. One is the survey is as of the moment that you ask the person the question, and they could change their mind the next day or change their mind when they get into the voting booth. That's number one. Number two, traces to the methodology of the survey. Who are the people most likely to answer the phone and stay on the phone for a political survey? And I would posit that the type of person who does that is not your normal everyday poison. Most of us hang up and say, what, are you kidding me? Click. So the person who likes to take a survey is maybe the person who likes to talk or the person who has strong opinions about politics or a lonely person, or a gullible person, I don't know. But it's not everybody, right? That's number one. Number two, younger people in particular don't like to talk on surveys. So it's very likely that people your age who are starting to vote were not included in the samples. And from what I've heard, there was a pretty large turnout of people your age, which is wonderful, by the way. So, lack of scientific results, lack of reliable results. This wouldn't have happened uh, with Father Gregor Mendel <laughs> with his experiments or in a scientific lab 
But look how, in a way, easy it is for consumer research to be biased. So you guys really need to ask yourselves, whenever you're seeing research results, how was this conducted? Please give me the details, not just the sample size, not just the dates. How did you do it? Always, just as was the case with um, accountability, we want to be very healthily skeptical when people start waving numbers around in front of us. It's probably a good way to be, not just for business, but in life, by the way. And the same goes, by the way, for the web interview, survey monkey. What types of, you know, certain types of people do survey monkeys. <laughs> right? First, they have to have internet access, and that's not everybody. All right, so methodology can bias results. A lot of things can bias results. Again, back to the lab. I think the fact that there is something called a placebo is a beautiful example of how one variable at a time is being tested. And when you're testing a new drug, because the act, and if it's administered by a pill, the act of taking a pill is in itself something that has an effect on your brain. <laughs> it can make you think you're cured. And we all know about mind over matter how the brain can sometimes heal the body. That seems to be a fact. I've heard about it many, many times. So to make sure that they're only testing for the drug, not for taking a pill with the drug in it, they take the variable of taking a pill out and give people placebos and read. That's the control group that they read against the people who take the real drug one variable at a time okay okay that's another project we don't need to talk about the goal is simple to find out what people really think and really feel the interviewer must not influence the subject in any way it's an attempt to find out a projectable truth all right so make sure the questionnaire the questionnaire is your research tool um be very careful. Read it carefully. Make sure there are no leading questions or no questions that will end up biasing your research. Carefully choose the wording, the sequence. Only include questions that are absolutely necessary because time is money and people don't like taking long surveys. Questions cannot influence or lead answers. So here's a typical, is this the only one? Yeah. Here's a typical uh, beginning of a questionnaire. There are a lot of questions in here, probably too many, but you start broad. You start from way out, and then you zoom in to the brand or the product you're really talking about. So you never mention, hi, I'm here from, you know, head and shoulder shampoo. I mean, and then you're going to do shampoo research and ask me what brands of shampoo I'm aware of. Mm -hmm not going to work. So you start, you know, who are you talking to? Demographic, psychographic questions. And then we maybe get to the, 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 the category. We're talking about shampoo. So how often do you ever, per, do you ever purchase shampoo? Who does it? Where do you go? These kinds of questions. You might consider putting some of them in. Buying pattern questions and then benefits questions. So what, what features do you look for? Is it price? Is it you know, what is it, the bottle, I mean, what makes you pick one brand over another? And then finally, you might get to what brands of shampoo are you aware of? And which brand of shampoo do you use? Why do you like that brand? And then, what do you think of head and shoulders? What, when I say that, what comes to mind? Right? Start very broad and then get to the brand. And keep it short. <laughs> So the in-market real-world world twist, testing, twisting on Twitter is um, what you guys are working on here with the project in the Denver DMA. Okay. Um, so, as I said, we'll finish with the same slide we started with. This kind of sums up some of the basics in terms of retail, in terms of retail, in terms of research. Okay.
do three things. Uh, file team meeting reports. I'm assuming you're having at least one weekly team discussion slash meeting of some kind. File a good team meeting report. Send it to your team members first and say, did I miss anything? And maybe you did. And then well, you'll hear back from one of them. And then your next team meeting, you start by pulling that report out and you see what progress has been made on the next steps. And by the way, you send it to me too. Read chapter 12. It's about fulfillment. It's not related to research, but it's a very important thing for you to know about. You're, we're working our way pretty much through the book now. So we had our lecture on research. We talked about what's due. Don't forget, there's a Padlet set up. It's in the team. I'm, put, I'm stuffing everything in the, in the team project folder. There's a lot of stuff in there. I just put a lot of new stuff about the library, about different databases, how to use them. Um, so all kinds of stuff in there for you to look at. Keep up to date on that. Take a look in that file from time to time. You may find new useful things in there. And that's it. If I can find my cursor, I can stop the lecture. Oh, there it is.